Uh, hi, uh, my name is Alagu, and this talk is going to be about hacking Photoshop. Um, so we built a product previously called Markup One, um, where we learned a lot of tech around hacking Photoshop. And uh, this talk is mostly going to be about uh, our learnings and how you could benefit from it. Um, usually, your design uh, or your HTML, CSS, when you start, it starts off when your designer gives you a Photoshop design or probably a PNG file. Um, most of the time, it's uh, it depends upon who is more lazy. If your designer is more lazy, he'll just give you a Photoshop file, and you have to measure every part of it. For example, uh, it'll be like your font size, what is the font, and colors, distances between each uh, each block, and the images, and uh, stuff like that. So um, all these things are actually uh, repetitive. If you're doing it again and again, it becomes really tedious. So, um, what you could actually do is, if you're doing this again and again, you can try to take out all this information from Photoshop and just inject it into your code. So, how can you actually hack Photoshop? Um, there are two ways to do it. One is to actually reverse engineer libraries in which you have language specific libraries, psd.rb which is for Ruby and uh, psd.js is a node.js based library which is what we used extensively and libpsds. All these libraries actually read through the Photoshop file format and then they give you information. Most of it is just read only, you'll just get a, a hash of the entire layers or the layer set and stuff like that. So the other way is to actually script over Photoshop. So scripting over Photoshop is uh, something like your Excel macros where you could just run functions over your uh, Photoshop file. Now um, the thing with this is it's actually slow because it's GPU intensive. You have to open up Photoshop, click stuff. Um, the similar stuff that you have seen is probably your photographer taking one small photograph and making uh, eight photographs for your passport size photo um, and probably applying a lot of filters for a lot of images. So, um, using all these libraries, you could get a lot of information from Photoshop, which generally tends to be a black box. Okay, so Photoshop file format uh, usually gives you a lot of information. It's about layers, layer bounds, filters, and so much of it. But what is relevant to us is probably very few things, which is the fonts, the colors, the images, and dimensions. Now. Um, let me actually quick, uh, do a quick demo of how you can get information from this. So, um, the first example probably I'll show is to open up fonts. So here, uh, this code, so most of the code that I'm showing is pretty much very, very simple. It's just reading through the Photoshop file and getting out some min very minimal information. Um, so what I'm doing here, uh, the core part of the code is here. I'm just looping through all the layers and I'm seeing if the layer is a text layer. And if it's a text layer, I just print the uh, um, fam font family name. Okay. Okay. Font family name. All right. So let me just run through it. So I have I have some sample Photoshop files. So I have a Photoshop file with three fonts. Let me just run through this. So it just reads the Photoshop file and then uh, parses all the layers and just gives me all the three font names. Now uh, the similar things that you can do with this is actually reading your colors. So I have a similar colors.psd uh, which has uh, some four different colors and the code is sort of very similar. Instead of actually printing out all the layer uh, font names, I am just checking if it is a solid fill and if it is a solid fill what I am doing is I am just parsing color which just converts your. 255255 to uh, hash hex. Um, so I'll just run through this as well. So it just prints all the hex layers. So uh, these are just very meta information that you could just read out from Photoshop, uh, uh, Photoshop format, but. Um, if you are actually trying to use the same reverse engineer libraries, the two code that I showed previously were using reverse engineer library. It was used. It was using psd. psd.js. It's a Node.js library. Now, if you are using this, 
uh, for extracting out images it may not work right the reason is um, most of the photoshop files tend to have clipping masks where you have to apply one layer o over the other now when you apply clipping masks all these uh, uh, reverse engineer libraries would give each layer each clipping layer as a specific layer so it won't merge both what you want to do is to merge both and then show it as a single image for your usage now that is possible only using your uh, photoshop extend script libraries which is scripting over photoshop the macro so the language that uh, the extend script uses is similar to javascript it's it's uh, it, it's in the same family of ecmascript so um, what you could do is you could just access the dom element uh, like you access in your browser you could just access the entire document and then loop through so what i'm doing here is just i'm going through all the layers and just making everything visible false and then i'm going through each layer making it visible true and then saving it as a png file and then setting it as false again now how do i run this to run this you have something called extend script toolkit it is basically a scripting environment over photoshop so um, i have compiled this coffee script into a javascript file and uh, that's what this is so let me just open up so this photoshop file has some images so what i'll do is i'll just export all these images all i need to do is just click on this run it will just open up each layer and then uh, save it so you have all the images extracted uh, separately so these these are uh, these are some very simple examples that you could do but the m more things that you could do around with this is probably finding differences between two photoshop files which is what we usually encounter very often because whenever we are iterating on new uh, new pages what uh, designers tend to do is to uh, take out their older version of design and then modify things and give it to us so it's very hard for engineers to find out what exactly has been changed so what we could do is to just so assuming i have two two designs so this is a design which has a uh, last image and then i have changed that last image by something else so what i could do is to run um i have a script which actually compares two two files and then gives out what are the just layer differences i'm just going very high level just the layer differences so my first file and then my second file so it just finds out what layers were deleted and what layers were added so this is very high level you can actually go as deep as possible try to find out what text has changed um and what font has changed you can go into any level and get uh, get an entire diff and what you could do is you could take snapshot of the diff that was made you could actually say that this image was added this font was added okay so so all these all these simple examples might not actually be a very huge value add it's very very marginal so the best use case is to replace yourself entirely as an engineer and uh, and and actually let your designer probably to push to production or um, probably in rahul gandhi's words empower your designer okay so um the 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 best uh, the best things that you could do is tell your designers to actually give assets which would work live in production so this is an example while we were working at zynga we had lot of fishes so all these fishes have lot of motions and they move up and down and they have their own uh, way of wagging tail and stuff but every week they push new fishes right so what the designers do is they just create new fishes they add markers saying you can the fish uh, starting point is here the tail wag is here and they just upload it to our server right so what they do is after uploading it it automatically picks up and then it uh, just pushes it to production and the fishes go live that's it we we never had to do anything in between you you can do a lot of font stuff but it won't be very good if you are doing it again and again but the best thing is you replace yourself with all these scripts the other uh, other thing that you could think about is um actually adding layers in which um 
you can say markers and all these markers can be clickable. You can export them as PNGs and you can say these layers are clickable and you can have a clickable mockup for your designer. The other thing which I just showed is versioning of PSDs. A um, lot of companies already do this. Uh, there is a company called Layer Vault which actually helps you to have version PSD files. Um, uh, you, can, you can version your own PSD files in your own uh, workflow. Uh, the next thing is really useful. The, all the fonts that you generated, all the colors that you generated, you could put them in separate uh, SAS files and you could use them in your main file. This is similar to your WordPress themes. You could just have a single file for your theme and you could modify your fonts and you could modify your colors and, and, and inject them directly. Right? So, um, all these things actually increase your productivity as an engineer and also helps you to keep pushing assets very often. Um, Okay, so all this said, why Photoshop? Of all things, why Photoshop? Why do you want to hack Photoshop? The thing is, uh, Photoshop actually uh, is not good for web. It's, it's a really good software, but it's not good for web. It doesn't have fonts as, when you see a font in Photoshop, it's not the same thing in, in web. And um, whatever you see in Photoshop is very hard to replicate. It takes an artist to actually get a pixel perfect HTML, right? And um, the whole structure, the DOM structure in a uh, browser and the layer structure in uh, Photoshop, they don't go so well. Um, and, and as an engineer, probably Paintbrush is much more easier for me compared to Photoshop. So, um, the reason why I think Photoshop is still alive is because there is no convincing alternative for designers to be more productive and still be able to uh, build stuff that would fit in web. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions if I still have time. Do I have time? Yeah. 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 So, uh, the clickable prototypes is just a use case that I think uh, wh what you could do. Uh, so, what you could do is um, make your designer tell that these are the clickable regions, right? And then you could use those x, y coordinates and width height and you could export that entire PSD as a PNG file and make it as a clickable layer in your HTML and that could point to another page. Hey, uh, hi, I have a question. Uh, hi, yeah. So, yeah, thanks for the information. The whole thing you said is about extracting info from PSD, correct? Extracting? Information from PSD. Yes, yes. Can we update a PSD through the script? Like, say I want to add a new layer. Yeah, 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 you can. So, the the uh, reverse engineer libraries necessarily don't let you do that. But uh, all these extend script, uh, scripting over Photoshop, you can do that. The way we were doing is all these uh, clipping layers, we were trying to copy all these layers into a new Photoshop file and then merge it and then save it as a new file. So, you can do a lot of stuff. You can do... Um, you can do add filters, you can do a lot of repetitive tasks using extend script. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes, last question. Uh, can we uh, read? Can you hear me? Sorry? Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I can. Uh, I can. Yeah, can we, uh, just as layers, can we read slices? Can we read slices? Yeah. Um. Sorry, I'm not sure. I haven't actually uh, tried slices, but uh, with extend script, definitely it should be possible. One one thing with extend script is anything that you're doing on a Photoshop document, it keeps, uh, you can collect all the information in, a so you have this thing called script listener.log. Whatever happens in your Photoshop file, you're clicking off, um, selecting off a layer or deleting a layer, everything gets recorded as a function. So, you could just copy this snippet, whatever action you're doing and you could uh, paste it in your extend script and repeat it again and again. So, if you're doing clipping, um, if you're doing slicing, then you could just see what function has been generated and then use it in your extend script. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hi. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can take the rest on chat.